Hello and welcome to Algebra. Today we're going to be looking at linear, quadratic, and exponential models. And as an added bonus, we're going to throw in some absolute value as well. So here you can see a little graphic organizer. We have linear functions, absolute value, quadratic, and exponential. Now, each one of these has its own specific characteristics, its own algebraic characteristics, and its own graphic. And these down at the bottom are when you look at the tabular data, as in looking at it in a table. So these are the different parent functions of each individual function family. Linear functions, y equals mx plus b, m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. Absolute value functions, y equals a times absolute value of x plus b, and then plus c. Quadratic functions, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And exponential functions, y equals a times b to the x power. Now, if you see them in those particular formats, when you see an algebraic equation, then you know immediately that you should be seeing that as absolute value. Say if there's absolute values, if you see to the second power, it's going to be quadratic to the second power on the x on the variable. If you see that the x is the variable, it'd be exponential. And then if you see simply a linear term and nothing else, then that would be linear. Now, a line, of course, linear function looks like a line, straight line. There's a common difference, meaning that when you look at the x and y values, uh, if x is going up by a constant amount, y should be going up by a constant amount. So the rate of change, change in y over change in x, uh, rise over run, that should be the same each time. It does not change direction. The difference graphically with absolute value is that absolute value will have a vertex, that is that corner, and it will change directions. It does have the same slope, but it does change directions. So it will be going one way and will turn and go the other. So if that happens, it's the same slope, but it does turn, it's absolute value, just so you know. Quadratic. When you look at this, of course, if it turns, if it's not linear and it turns like this, uh, there is a vertex. It is not an, a straight V. That would be absolute value. Uh, if it doesn't, if it's not linear and it does turn and have a vertex like this, then that is quadratic. Also, if it has a common second difference, so you look at the Y, subtract the Ys, that would not be the same, but when you subtract them a second time, that will be the same. That's an immediate clue that this is going to be quadratic functions. That's important, the common second difference. Now, exponential functions, the second difference is not the same. So let's look at a few. So we're going to graph the pair of points, each set of points, and then figure out which is the appropriate model. So 1, 3, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1, and negative 2, 0. So 1, 3, 0, 0, negative 3, 3. Uh, we look at this. It's not linear. The slope here is negative 3. The slope here is negative 1. The slope here is positive 1. The slope here is positive 3. What's happening is, if you arrange these in order, uh, that would be negative 3, 3, negative 2, 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, and then uh, 1, 3. If you arrange those in order, then we look at the difference of the y's. The x's are going up by 1. Let's look at the y's. This goes up 3. This goes up 1, this goes, excuse me, down 1, down 3, down 1, this is going up 1, this is going up 3. Now subtract these. Negative 3 minus negative 1, keep change, change, keep change, change, that's negative 3 plus 1, it's negative 2. Look at the second difference here. Negative 1 minus 1. Keep change, change. That's negative 2. 
1 minus 3, again, keep change, change, is going to be negative 2. So you notice the second difference, these are the x's, these are the y's. When you look at the first difference, that's not the same. When you would look at the second difference, that is the same. When the second difference is the same, that is definitely quadratic. Now, could you have told that by just simply looking at the points? Yes. You could say, you know what, um, this is not linear. It is changing. So if you see a vertex there where it's changing directions, then it's either the absolute value or it's quadratic. You know it's not linear, so it's not absolute value. So this has to be quadratic. And then if you want to be absolutely sure, you can figure out a table of values, put these in order. These have been mixed up out, uh, out of order. Then you can take the first difference, subtract them, the y values. Take the second difference, and then those should be constant if it's quadratic. If it's not, then that will be exponential if it weren't linear. Okay, let's look at these points. 0, 2. Negative 1, 4, 1, 1, 2, 1 half. So you look, this is going down. It's either quadratic or exponential. There's not really enough information. One would think that it might be exponential since it's not turning back up. But sometimes they don't give you enough information. Sometimes they try to trick you. So let's put these in order. Negative 1, 4 would be first. then 0, 2, then 1, 1, and 2, 1 half. So we look at the first difference. 4 minus 2, 2, 2 minus 1, 1, 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. Let's look at the second difference. 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. The second difference is not the same. It cannot be quadratic. In fact, we think that it's exponential, and really the test for exponential would be to see if we put it in order, are you multiplying by the same thing each time? Well, 1 half to 1, you're multiplying by 2. 1 to 2, you're multiplying by 2. 2 to 4, you're multiplying by 2. So it's definitely exponential because you're multiplying by the same thing each time. Negative 1, negative 2. 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 3, 2. You notice it has a constant slope. This is linear. Now, let's look at a table and see if we can decide which one this is. Now, again, we're going to, this is ordered uh, in the y, the excuse me, the x values are in order, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. We're going to look at the y values and look at the difference. Now, 9 minus 5 is 4, 5 minus 5 is 4, 1 minus negative 3 is 4, negative 3 minus negative 7 is 4. The first difference is the same. That means that the slope is the same. And you can see that it's going down, 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 down. It is a um, constant rate of change. So this is linear. Constant rate of, rate of change. It's not turning, so it's not absolute value. OK, so we're going to look at this one. Again, x's are in order. Up 1, up 1, up 1, up 1. Here, we're going down. I'm going to say a fourth. Here, I'm going down 3 fourths. Here, 1 and 1 fourth would be down 5 fourths. And here, 1 and 3 fourths would be down 7 fourths. So that's the first difference. It is not the same, so it's not linear. Let's look at the second difference. Subtract, and we actually get positive 1 half. Negative 1 fourth minus negative 3 fourths. Keep, change, change. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 fourths is 1 half. Subtract again, we get 1 half. 
subtract again, we get 1 half. So the common difference, the second difference is common. So this is a classic quadratic. That'll do it for today. I hope that helps. Have a good day.